So we are on our way um, to Yellowstone National Park, and we just passed the town of Tensleep um, in the Tensleep Creek. But um, Google had us kind of take a really, uh, you know, a route that says it's about an hour faster than taking uh, Route 16 to Route 20, which is might be the more traditional route, but we are out here in the middle of nowhere in Wyoming. Like, look at this. This is like insane. I know you can't see this on camera, but it is, or hear this, but it is so quiet that it's almost uncomfortable. Like we're here stopped because Denise had to like check for some wires and stuff to charge some of the camera and some of the other electronics and stuff like that. But it is like, I, I can't even say like, it almost like hurts. It's so quiet. It's weird. Um, I took a pee and I was like, I feel like the town, the guy down the road can hear me because it's just like, it's like if the silence is, I know, I've heard the saying, the silence is deafening and that's like what it feels like out here. We're about a little, little less than four hours away from Yellowstone and we will be there shortly. So we will see you guys there. Look at this. We are here at Yellowstone National Park. Let's get this. We're pulling in. How are we doing today? I'm doing great. How are you folks? Not too bad. Pretty excited. Got a pants on you? Yes. That looks like Zachary Jones. That would be me. That would be you. I got it the first try. I love it. All right. Thank you. That's my name game. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. You betcha. Have right. a good afternoon. You thanks. too. Woo! Oh man, we got a lot of homework. Got the stuff to do, <laughs> got the homework to do. Here we go. All right, let's see. So right now we're heading into the park from the east entrance. It was not necessarily intentional to come in this way, but I would recommend it personally. I thought it was really nice. It's uh, Google Maps kind of gives you the you know the fastest way. So we took a back ro a back road, which I'm sure obviously others have done or many do, I should say, but. It, instead of taking you on Route 20 the whole way, it, it took you on Route 16 um, in the back roads of Wyoming, which is really great to get a really different look at the topography and just see like what Wyoming has to offer. We were coming um, from the, the you know, Crazy Horse, Mount Rushmore, Rapid City, Black Hill area. Um, so yeah, we took some like back roads, but it was great to, you know, really just, you know, I don't know a better way, but like digest the land and really kind of see and like, you know, marinate on it and really see what, what, what the, what Wyoming is all about, especially since it's, you know, my and Denise first time. Um, the thing is that if you coming in the East entrance, it does put you about an hour away from like the main quote unquote attractions, you know, cause this park has so much to offer, but, um, yeah, it puts you, it puts you, oops. It does put you uh, a bit of a bit of a ways away, so it's just a reminder if you're coming in the east entrance. Um, right now, Yellowstone is experiencing a really big influx of people. So, some tips and tricks that we read that to share with you guys is that to make sure that you are saving like the main again the main attractions like Old Faithful, you know, um, I don't know, just. Just any of the main attractions that you have here in the park. I um, I'm can't, I'm blanking a little bit, to missing listening off the top of my head. But when you're going, it says to try to plan them for the afternoon because the main hours Denise was reading and researching that it, that it really, the, the main time is between nine and three. So not sure how accurate that is. We're gonna see ourselves and we'll be able to let you know whether that is like, you know, a valuable bit of information. Um, but yeah, just remember that this is a massive, massive national park, and then it takes time to get around. So, um, here we go. Whoa! 
What's up guys? So we're officially like really in the park at Mary Bay. What do you think, Denise? So excited! It's beautiful. This place is so huge. This is just the lake. Feels like we're at the ocean. I mean, how, why don't you why, tell us a little bit. Denise has been reading. <laughs> why don't you tell us it's what? the, it is the highest lake. Highest elevation lake. Where? I think in the world. Highest elevation lake. We believe, or it's the largest, the largest highest, highest elevation, elevation lake. lake. Is it in the U.S. or the world? <laughs> we're gonna say the world. We got, is we're gonna say the world. It's definitely not. It's definitely probably it's not. My world. But it might be. But it really might be. So we're here. We're gonna hit. It's four o'clock. We're gonna hit as much as we can today. The thing that's really cool about being here late again, as I said, is we might be able to get things that are a little less busy. The highway in this area on the east side is deserted. Um, but we're gonna walk down to the beach real quick and see if we can find anything cool. Let's see, what we got working with over here? Gotta be careful out here, cause you got like rattlesnakes, and you got bear, grizzly bear, you know, and all sorts of fun things, but, you know, we're ready. We came with bear spray. Always make sure you come with bear spray, even on the main paths. This year, there's been a lot of a bear attacks, um, or people attacking bears, or being in their space and then getting attacked. So, make sure if you come in 20, 2020, 2021, that you bring your bear spray. Dragon's Mouth Spring, or Spring. We are gonna go for the other part of this walk, on this, the geothermal pools over here on the east side of the park. Um, but fortunately, bison were on the pathway and people were getting chased by them. So they had to close the that side of the hot spring loop um, until the bison clear the pathway. So again, nature rules it it's space and we may have to come back over here to try to do that loop later if we have time but other than that it's on to the next one so guys down here below i don't know if you can hear on this microphone if it's good enough you know it's a good test for the new gopro cage but they're starting to do some mating calls and stuff like that and if you watch if we're here long enough the males are chasing the females That's awesome, man. Oh, look at them in the back in, in the mud. See that? Maybe. Some bison singing. Wow. Incredible. Oh, they about to battle on the road? Oh, we lit. Oh, it's about to pop off. They really leave the road like that. I went from David Atterbell to Gang Gang. <laughs> that was crazy. And we have just arrived at the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone Park. The gorgeous view of the river. The waterfall. Man, that is something else. Look how powerful that is. Man, you can just not, like, geez, like, there's nothing you can do but be excited when you see stuff like this. Like, this is incredible. 
Look at that. I mean, it lets you just know that nature is on top still. You know, like, we are doing horrible things to it, but this is like, you just like feel it. It's like electric, it's crazy. What it is what it do guys so we are heading um or we are back in the park this morning uh we ended up in montana and we didn't even know it we stayed over there last night and it's about 7 42 in the morning on the 21st and we're about to head on to an off-road track it's about a seven mile track called um blacktail plateau drive and it rejoins again if you've been to the park or you're looking at the roads uh with tower road um or main road, um, or, you know, people would do the main road of this area as you head towards, um, you know, the Petrified Tree and the Lamar Flats. So we're really excited this morning. Um, we've been doing this little checklist uh, that they give you, and it has all these different animals on it, and it's been a lot of fun. Um, we're looking forward to another great day. We were able to secure campsites, which are awesome, um, which we didn't think we were gonna get because, you know, people, you know, it's a it people book years in advance. So we were able to get a campsite, I believe, at, if I look at the map correctly, we were able to get a campsite uh, at Grant Village and as well as Madison. Madison. So we're gonna be all over the park for the next three days. We, our last day, we'll be, we'll be sleeping over Monday night and then we may stop somewhere Monday morning potentially, but, and then it's back down to Colorado. So we're looking forward to it. Hopefully we see something cool, uh, some cool things and we get a, you know, hike or two in there, a trail. But yeah, we're looking forward to today and here we go. What's up guys? So the trail we went on was absolutely amazing. Um, the black tail deer trail was really something else. Um, right now I'm here at the petrified tree. Um, if you guys don't know what a petrified tree is or, you know, living like, you know, plant-based things or organisms, it's not quite a fossil. I mean, it is a fossil in the sense, um, but it's a much different process, I suppose. Um, this, the petrified tree, from my understanding, and to, this may not be the most, and from what I'm reading here actually, is that when volcanic ash and um, the mud flows of this region, when the caldera um, of the volcano, which is when a volcano is formed up top and then collapses, that is the caldera. Um, f when that happens and there is volcanic ash in the air, it can coat living organisms like a tree, or um, usually it's trees we find and it petrifies them. And what it does is it turns them into a fossilized remain. So again, it's not necessarily the same as like maybe being in a sedimentary river, but it's a similar process using volcanic ash. So originally here, it's reported and said that there were three redwood trees that were petrified. 
Um, unfortunately, um, people who were looking for souvenirs and to take things home chipped away the other two. But the one we're walking up to see right now is one, the last standing, or last remaining one in this spot. There you have it, a petrified tree. So the thing I find the most interesting about the process or, or looking at this um, is the texture, the texture of this tree. Uh, like, you know, I don't know if you could see on camera, but the texture is like insane. Um, it's really incredible seeing the, there's like black, um, there's red, there's um, brown. There's just so many different colors and minerals that have coated and hung onto this tree. And I'm not sure you can see, but like way up top, like right up there, there's like some grass growing. So just a cool little thing to stop by. Um, if you can't make it, don't beat yourself up over it. But it's just cool to see, you know, what happened in this area historically and how this massive super volcano collapses to create this gorgeous landscape that we know as Yellowstone. I mean, like, look at that. Like, just this is just like one little drive in this hidden valley, you know, to this, this petrified tree. So super awesome super awesome thing to come visit if you can't make it don't beat yourself up over it um because there's some really other great things here at yellowstone as they say you can spend your whole life here and still not see everything so on to the next thing what a morning we literally just got done. I couldn't, I didn't any time to film it. We jumped out of the car and there was wolves. There are a wolf. There was a black wolf feeding on a buffalo carcass. And there was tons of people with cameras and you know, 10, $15,000 cameras. Oh my God, look at three eagles. Sorry, literally three eagles flying. Oh, you can see. Holy smokes. Wow, that's okay. incredible. Bro, Yellowstone is insane. Went from a black wolf feeding to three eagles. Bald eagles. Whoa.